Hello comrades, you watching Red Ivan Airsoft and today we'll talk about the Rhodesian SAS mid-war airsoft loadup. <laughs> Depending on the mission, there are two types of the Rhodesian SAS loadouts – cross-border and raid. Cross-border is when SAS units are located across the border and they are trying not to look as the Rhodesian troops. For this type of missions, all the green uniforms were used, later and less often some Portuguese lizard could be seen, and of course enemy weapon and enemy webbing. But today we'll talk about the raid loadout. Uh, where uh, some domestic camouflages could be seen. Before the UDI, SAS units wore O-degree uniforms and Denison smoke jackets, both 1941 and 1959 models. But after the UDI, the camouflage called brush stroke spread through the army. Uh, brush stroke was developed around 1964. There were a couple variants of it, uh, including experimental uh, arid pattern, before it was finalized around 1970. SAS units mostly used uh, pants, shorts. Uh, there were also field jackets available, but they used uh, shorts, bunny hats, or sometimes sea caps in this pattern, and sometimes also they used coveralls. The original uniform in this pattern is pretty rare and expensive these days. I would say from few hundreds all the way to few thousand, depending on the piece. However, there are several companies uh, which produce uh, replicas and we'll start with Watt Price Glory. I am a huge fan of this company. They have incredible customer service. I got my short and uh, boonie hat from them and uh, I needed a replacement of the short because uh, the size was not correct and I got a replacement uh, within a week. I think even less than a week, like six days. Can you imagine to get something replaced because of your fault in less than a week? That's awesome. The only thing I don't really like about them is the material that uh, the clothes made of. I don't really like how it feels. However, it's my personal thing. Next one is the Fire Force Ventures. This is where I got my pants from. I really like the material, I like the camouflage pattern, the personnel is very helpful and uh, friendly. However, unfortunately, they don't produce the original Rhodesian cut anymore and they do only BDUs at this time. So, we are moving to the next company. Next company is Green Leader. Uh, I know that they have very good quality stuff. They produce it in South Africa. Uh, but uh, from what I know, the waiting time is pretty long, so you need to order in advance. And the last one is Pedro in Portugal. However, unfortunately, I don't have any information about this brand. So if you guys use their products, please let me know what do you think about them in the comments below. And we are moving to the boots. Basically, there are three models of boots used by a Rhodesian SAS units. First model is uh, Beta Lightweight Boots. Second option is uh, Clandestine Boots, which are pretty similar to Converse. And uh, the last one is Standard uh, Army Issued Boots, which are the most heavy ones. However, unfortunately, it's not that easy to find any of those. I got Vietnam era jungle boots, which were used during the Rhodesian war by some American volunteers. However, it's really very, very uncommon thing. But since I already have the Vietnam War collection and I just had these boots already available, I decided to keep them before I found something better, like uh, better lightweight boots, for example. Few words about helmets. There were uh, four options. First one is uh, Rhodesian uh, fiber helmet. Second one is South African Defense Forces um, M63 helmet. Uh, and two British helmets. Uh, first one is uh, British uh, Dispatch Driver's helmet. And second one is uh, British uh, Airborne helmet called uh, Helmet Steel Airborne Troop. And we came all the way to the load carrying equipment. Uh, first, let's discuss all load carrying systems that were used during the Rhodesian War. And later on, we'll discuss uh, things that you see on my table, pouch by pouch. 
So first system is British pattern 44, uh, which left from the British rule times. This was the main issue at load carrying system before the UDI. Next one is South African pattern 61 slash 64. Actually, patterns 61 and 64 have some minor differences. However, since elements from both systems usually used together, South African militaries call them pattern 61 slash 64. Uh, basically, uh, pattern 61 uh, made of uh, brown or hockey canvas uh, with uh, black furniture, uh, while pattern 64 made of uh, OD green canvas with uh, green uh, furniture. Also, there are some other small uh, differences. The most noticeable, in my opinion, is that pattern 61 uh, doesn't have any kind of canteen cover and canteen attached to the system by straps, while pattern 64 uh, has uh, even two different types of canteen covers, but we'll discuss it a little bit later. Next system is a Rhodesian made uh, pattern 69, which based on the pattern 61 64. Later, South African Pattern 70 system appeared in the conflict and the main feature of this load carrying system was that belt and kidney pouches were made in one piece. Also, some FN FAL MAC pouches rigs made by Ferdy and Sun were used. Uh, some Fire Force uh, vests made by Norse captured uh, Chinese Chicoms. And even Soviet 3-cell MAC pouches were used by some SAS members. Also, talking about some foreign equipment, uh, some M1956, M1967 and Ellis systems were used by some American volunteers. However, if you want to make some nice uh, Rhodesian SAS loadout, please don't use these American systems. They were pretty rare and they, was used, they were used only by American volunteers. So finally, let's discuss things that you see on my table and we'll begin this conversation with belts. In my hands right now, you see this South African Pattern 61 belt to adjust uh, the waist. You have these eyelets here and uh, the hook on inner side. Um, interesting is that sometimes you see these eyelets only halfway and sometimes you see these eyelets all the way till the end. I'm not sure why. If you know the answer, please uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, to attach your equipment to it, your pouches, you use uh, clamps like this, uh, which was pretty interesting for me as a person who usually use uh, Soviet or uh, US equipment. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that it's very usual thing to uh, people who use British style equipment. So you see inside the belt, on the inner part of the belt, you have the small, I would say, openings or pockets. So you put your clamps inside. Very interesting. Now on the screen you see a pattern uh, 64 belt, which is pretty similar to the pattern 61 but in old degree color with green uh, furniture. And you see pattern uh, 69, Rhodesian made belt, which is a little bit different. You see to adjust the waist, you also use the same openings and you have no eyelets. And again, pattern 70 uh, does not have uh, a separate belt uh, since belt already connected to the kidney pouches. Next step is suspenders or uh, yoki. In my case, it's a uh, pattern 61 version. Uh, here we have the shovel attachment on the back. Interesting thing is that some of the pattern 61 slash 64 yokis, they uh, don't have this uh, shovel attachment and they only have some small hook on the back, uh, which means they are like for the police units rather than the army version. Um, now on the screen you also see pattern 69 version uh, which has some additional straps. Speaking about pattern 70 Yoki, it is easy identifiable because of uh, four uh, front attachment points instead of two uh, like in the previous models. 
And we came all the way to the magazine pouches. In my case, these are two British Pattern 44 Mag pouches, right and left. Left has some bayonet attachment uh, straps. They have pretty uh, classical British uh, closure system and they are very big. They are so big, so they are comfortable to be used with uh, AK magazine, FN FAL 30 round magazine and uh, SES members even modified them uh, to be used as a container uh, for the RPD belt. For demonstrational purpose, right now you see pattern 44 and pattern 61 pouches uh, side by side and as you can see uh, pattern uh, 44 is almost uh, twice bigger than pattern 61. Now let's quickly compare pattern 61 and pattern 64 pouches. You see even though they are from the same system they really have some minor differences. Now you see pattern 69 mag pouch on the screen and pattern 70 mag pouch. Pattern 70 mag pouch was the only one with a snap on bottom. Now let's talk uh, about kidney pouches. Uh, pattern 61 uh, slash 64 kidney pouches uh, should be uh, attached to each other. So it's like one double pouch. However, I separated them because they are so big so they uh, eat all the free space on your belt. So I use only one of them right now and that's what some guys did and that's why pattern 69 kidney pouches already were produced separately. So if you need only one of them or you need them on different sides you can do so from the beginning. However, if you're talking about South African Pattern 70 kidney pouches, as you remember, they are attached to the belt, so you cannot separate them, otherwise you will not have your belt. Couple words about the holsters. Uh, this is a Pattern 61 slash 64 holster. Uh, this one is early production. The thing is that um, early holsters uh, were made for revolvers and then they were modified uh, to be used with uh, the regular pistols. That's why, uh, like on mine, you see that uh, this uh, magazine pouch uh, is made of different material and uh, there is a small spot on the flap uh, which shows that uh, this um, closure was restitched in order to make the uh, straight flap instead of slant flap like on the uh, revolver holsters. Now let's discuss canteens and canteen covers. There are three types of canteens uh, used during the Rhodesian War. First one is uh, British Pattern 44 old aluminum canteen. Second one is uh, South African Pattern 61 64 aluminum canteen with plastic case. I think this case is made uh, to protect uh, canteen from sun. However, I may be wrong. So if you know the correct answer, please uh, correct me in the uh, comments below and the last type is uh, plastic canteen uh, pattern 70 which is pretty close uh, to the american m1956 canteen uh, this canteen was uh, south african made and it has uh, writings in both languages english and Afrikaans. however there were uh, also some canteens that uh, made with no writings so some people say that these canteens were made in Rhodesia, while other people say that these canteens were made uh, with no writings in uh, South Africa. So uh, nobody knows that South Africa supplies Rhodesia. Pattern 44 canteen was used with pattern 44 canteen cover. Pattern 61 did not have a canteen cover and uh, canteen was attached uh, to the system with straps, as I told you earlier. Pattern 64 had two types of canteen covers, early one, which is pretty close to the Pattern 44 canteen cover, but smaller for the smaller canteen, and later one, which is uh, pretty close to the American Pattern uh, M1956. Also I have here the Rhodesian uh, Pattern 69 canteen cover. By the way, as you can see, I use the regular plastic bottles. These are not Rhodesian or uh, South African, these are regular American canteens. It's just because I like to use new canteens and they are pretty similar, so nobody see them in the canteen cover. And uh, 
pattern 70 system had a canteen cover uh, which is pretty uh, similar to the pattern 64 canteen cover later version or uh, American M1956 canteen cover but with uh, some uh, carbon. As I told you earlier, Chicom cheese trick was also often used by uh, SAS members and uh, there was also a modification of Chicom where they stitch uh, the uh, FN FAL mag rig to the Chicom so it has uh, more pockets. Few words about the backpacks. Uh, there were four main types of backpacks in Rhodesian Army. Uh, pattern 44 small backpack like you see behind me, uh, type 1 backpack, type 2 backpack and uh, the most popular with Rhodesian SAS uh, units, uh, three spear South African made backpack. And again, 3-spear was the most common, however, since for the airsoft purpose it's too big, I using this smaller pattern 44 backpack. Now let's discuss guns, and we'll begin with pistols. There were three the most popular pistols in the Rhodesian army. Browning High Power, Spanish Star Model B, and since this one is pretty close to the 1911, I use 1911. Uh, and uh, Walter P38. Uh, Rifles. The main rifle of the Rhodesian SAS units was FN FAL. It could be Belgian, South African model called R1, however not SLR. All British SLR were moved out of service right after the UDI. Another popular weapon of choice was the AK. It could be Soviet AKM or AKMS, like in my case. It could be Romanian PMMD-63 or PMMD-65 which is under folder, it could be Yugoslavian Zastava M70, even Hungarian AMD 65, Chinese Type 56, German MPI KMS 72 and MPI KM 72, uh, Czechoslovakian VZ58, however the last one was not really popular because of the magazine, Portuguese G3s that were supplied to Rhodesian army was not popular with SAS units. Now let's discuss machine guns. The most popular machine gun used by SAS units was a Soviet RPD. Also Soviet RPK and PKM were used and uh, FN MAG also were used by um, SAS members. And as you can see they also used RPG-7. And the last thing that you guys see on my table is uh, Soviet uh, bayonet called uh, 6H4. This one was uh, good trophy. It goes good with my AK, so why not? Thank you for watching my friends, I hope you like this video, put like, subscribe to my channel, check links in the description and see you soon. Here's the story of Rhodesia, a land both fair and great, on the 11th of November, an independent state.